and so many stories. And I'm sure some of the family has heard some of these stories over and over again. But, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if maybe they learned something even new today as you just share uh, your heart from us as well. And uh, so that's, that's what we're excited, excited about. So one of the things, we, with your permission as well, is maybe at some point uh, in your story, we'll get your book out and maybe your other certificates that you had that maybe at some point Mike can just get it and show it during our conversation as well if it comes up in any of our stories. Okay? So we'll, uh, we'll begin first uh, to say that uh, what an honor it is for us to come and uh, just do the pinning for we honor our veterans for, uh, for Donald E. Chapman. And that was just a wonderful ceremony that we just did. Now we have a wonderful opportunity to come alongside and talk with Donald a little bit and just ask him a few questions and have him share a few of his stories with us. And so the first one is, can you remember the year that you joined the service and how old you were at the time? Yeah, I was 17 years old. I joined in Buffalo, New York. <clears throat> and I passed everything, physical and all of it. And uh, on my way out, the lieutenant had handed me a handful of papers and he said, you gotta take these home and have your dad sign them, <laughs> otherwise we can't use you. I took them home and Dad signed them. Dad says, after he signed them, he said, I might be uh, signing your death warrant. And the cocky kid that I was, I said to him, Dad, you better both to kill me yet. <laughs> So what was the inspiration to go into service at the age of 17? Uh, the war was on and I always liked to be around the ocean and the water, you know, and things like that. So when I went to Buffalo, I was just a skinny kid, so <laughs> actually. So they passed over me from the Marines Bulkier, and they're most guys. Okay. Got it. So I ended up in the Navy. So you didn't go with a, a thought in your mind that you wanted to join a particular service. You just said whichever one they put you in yeah. was good enough for you? Yeah. You ended up in the Navy. How about that? Now, was there anybody else from your family that ever served in the military? Or are you the first one? Oh, my served in the Air Force in Texas. Right. But you were the first one in the family. No. His dad was. His dad, dad was. was. Oh, okay. 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 He was in World War I. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. He got in at the end of the war and he served, I think, I remember right, about eight months is all he served in service. Okay. In the cavalry. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So um, you went to basic training and boot camp? I did. And where did they send you for that? Samson, New York. Sam up to Samson, New York. Okay. So what was what was that experience like? Well, I learned a lot of things that I shouldn't do. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of things that I could do. So you told us that you served in World War II. Yeah. So just talk me then a little bit, talk us through a little bit of the basic, from basic training when you graduated from there, what was next? What did you do? Walk me a little through that timeline. Well, we went to uh, Great Lakes Training Station. And uh, that's where we finished our training. Okay. It was all in gunnery, 5-inch 38s, we learned how to use them. And it was in the winter time and it was cold. And there was a heater in one end of the barracks and then a heater in the other end of the barracks. And in the middle, you find 
snowflakes on the ground. <laughs> so we slept in our clothes usually. Okay. And so tell us a little bit then about your first excursion, so to say, or uh, where'd you go next? Well, <clears throat> I didn't go on the shakedown. I put the ship in commission in Boston. And uh, we went from well, that was mo mostly gunnery training. We spent some time on USS Pennsylvania in gunnery practice. That was a battleship at that time. And that was, like I say, part of our training, gunnery training. And finally I ended up in Sampson, New York. And finished my boot training. Okay. Yeah. You were telling me the other day then that you were then getting ready to go. Yeah. And then you had a story. You Tell us that story. Well, <laughs> That was after I got aboard ship, and I was a gunnery security watch. And uh, the chief came aboard one night. I just reported to the officer of the deck. So I listened to what happened and what he had to say. And uh, the OD told him, he said, Chief, he said, uh, he looked in the paper sack. He said, you know, that's not allowed on here. He said, when you go back aft, he said, I want you to, I want to hear two splashes. So I followed him around a little bit a distance. He set that sake, sack full of sake down, <laughs> two bottles in it. Walked over to the rail, pulled off one shoe, dropped it, splash, pulled off the other shoe, dropped it, splash, picked up his sake and went back to his quarters. <laughs> <laughs> next morning he was down in the sock feet, the ship stores again, buy a new pair of shoes. <laughs> <laughs> So that was one of the fun stories you always remember. Oh, from yeah. That. But I'm sure some of the stories weren't always quite so fun. Some of your experiences and stuff. And so I was just curious if you would like to elaborate on the experiences. If not, we understand that as well. But uh, it's on a kind of like you actually were in combat. Oh, yeah. And what did that look like for kind of the future generation at that time? Well, Shows you in the book there. Where they splashed a Japanese zero. And it shows also in that one area all these black splotches in the sky. Okay. 40 millimeter, 5 inch, 38. Proximity fuses. And when that fuse or that yeah, that fuse in the head of that shell came with anywhere near an aircraft. It exploded, blew the shell right apart. That took the aircraft. Okay. And so that's what you were doing. That was your job for one of those big gunneries to to uh, shoot at right there, the enemy's it? airplanes. Yeah. These are the black spots you're talking about. Yeah, that's the yeah. one. Yeah, There's a lot of steel up there. Mm. That's yeah. where he splashed. Yep, that's where yeah. they shot one down. Yeah. That was the start of a typhoon. So you uh, you encountered all kinds of stuff when you were on that ship then. Oh, yeah. Calm we waters. You said a typhoon as well, huh? We went through two of them. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. What was your ship's name? USS Topeka, CL 67.
to some of the pictures from a book that uh, Donald has. That's of the Topeka, the ship. Of the Topeka, yeah. while he's on it. How many did you say were on the ship? Well, at the time I was down there, our battle crew was 2,500 men and officers. A lot of guys. Wow. Yes. So you were in the military for how many years? Six years. Six years. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Yeah, I finished out the war and then we sent us to Bikini Island. They were going to run some bomb tests out there. And we took uh, one of the guys that developed an atom bomb out there as an observer. And later on I found out my son-in-law got his obituary for this fella. He said he died of Pneumonia and other causes. And the other causes of radiation. That island today, nobody can live on it. And we went to Manila, and two days after we left and got to Manila, they had an underwater blast. First one was an air blast, it didn't hit the ground, but it came close. In fact, you were you went to Tokyo to see what it looked like there. Yeah, we did. There's pictures of it here if you want to show that. Yeah, we'll, okay. yeah, we'll, do, we'll do that. So tell us a little story about that then. Yeah. We have some pictures of here when you were in Tokyo. Tell us about that. Well, <coughs> there was a lot of rubble there. And walking down the street one day, every time we'd meet a Japanese soldier, he crossed over and go down the other side of the street. Well, I was looking for a souvenir, and I walked by this house, and the door was open, and I hollered, and I didn't know if anybody was there, nobody showed up. I walked in there, and there's this uh, flag, Rising Sun flag, on the wall. That was my souvenir. I took that down and brought it home. Wow. And my son, Keith. You got that? Today. How nice. So, th just a little bit of your experience with being in the service. How did that prepare you then for the rest of your career? And, and all the different things that you did when you came came back to Potter County? Well, he was able to stay married for 70 years. <laughs> so for 70 years. <laughs> well, he, yeah. Yeah. Tell, tell him the story. You, you came back, you were, you were here in the area, and you were ready to, to re-up, but you didn't re-up because something else happened. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, Went to a, base, a baseball game on Sunday. The next day, Monday, I was going to Buffalo to re-enlist. Because I'd been out three months and I could still hold my rate. And, uh, Norma's dad took me over to the car and introduced me to his daughter. Norma, the oldest. So I figured that as nice looking as she was, I'd stick around a while. <laughs> so 
I did. <laughs> and the 24th of December was 1950. Aww. I proposed. Aww. She accepted. <laughs> Christmas Eve. Yeah. Yep. And she died on the morning of Christmas Eve of the 70th. Oh, really? wow. It's a lot of wonderful memories in all in oh, between yeah. all those years, huh? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So one of the things we think about is our veterans, when we honor our veterans. And uh, what do you think civilians can learn from our veterans? Mm -hmm. This is your chance to tell us. Well, I'll tell you one thing you can learn, that's discipline, self-discipline. Can you elaborate? <coughs> a lot of, I know there was guys that were in the service that weren't exactly sort of their material. We had one incident aboard ship. We were off the coast of Japan. We were practicing with 45 automatics. And the chief told us, he said, when you get through firing your five, fifth shot, he said, take that gun and put it in the air like this. He said, now I'll come and get it. Well, one guy didn't do that. He kept it in his hand and Pointing down, and uh, the ship's baker stood over in front of turret one. There's a course of deck was all steel up there, and that gun went off. The chief grabbed it, the bullet hit the steel and ricocheted up, took him right in the chest. <gasps> that day to this, I had never laid eyes on that guy again. He transferred him right off his ship. Oh. I don't know where he went or what he was mm -hmm. charged with or anything. Mm -hmm. wow. The thing of it was, he was father of a new baby girl just about oh. a couple of weeks old. Mm -hmm. that so the key word you were talking about is discipline. Right. So as a veteran, when you're in the military, that's one of the things that is probably beat into your head. To well, you, you do as they tell you. Okay. You don't talk back. <laughs> a lot of people can learn something from that statement, huh? That's right. <laughs> I thought that's... Uh, that's what you were thinking. Yes, yes. So do you remember actually coming home from your from your six years? And uh, what was it like to be discharged from the military? Well, <clears throat> like I say, I got my plans changed. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> that was after you came back. So yeah. you were in the military, you had all those experiences on the ship and uh, the battleship and uh, so and then you came home and so this is before you talked to uh, to the father and, oh yeah uh, so just from that coming home was you know here you were six years away you had all that combat experience and you come home so what was that experience like well like I said it was I felt that we had a job to do to beat the Japs, and we did it. Our Air Force was the one that did it. Because they caught those Jap carriers out there all together. They sunk every blasted one of them. Dive bombing and street bombing mm -hmm. and fighter bombers. That broke the back of the Japanese resistance to a certain extent. What really did it was when they dropped the atom bomb on Tokyo. Okay. 
So would you encourage young people today to join the service? Well, yeah, the type of service I was in, but today it's entirely different because these, these big mouth recruits today, they'll sass their officers and back talk them and everything, and that's not military. So with that, what it was back when you were in, what the military was like when Keith was in, and then kind of like what you just sense what the military is like now, what changes have you seen in the military over the years? Well, that's rather a hard question. Mm -hmm. But I think the main thing I seen was a lack of discipline. Lack of discipline. Because yeah. yes. when I was in, you didn't just, an officer gave you an order, you carried it out. You didn't question it. And that was what was needed at that time. Win those battles of the overseas. Do you have any other uh, memories? Like sometimes we ask the question, what was your most memorable experience? Did you already talk about that, or do you have another one you'd like to share with us? Well, we went in on an island. Japan, it was an air base and ammunition dump. We went in at night with the cruiser, <coughs> bombarded it. Of course, at that time, I was in the upper handling room loading hoist for the guns. laid there on the carpet asleep. <laughs> my head on my arms. The gun captain woke me up and he said, you better go clean up. <laughs> I raised up. There was a puddle there and I knew I hadn't sold up. <laughs> but another guy did and he hit me right in the ear. <laughs> along, the, along the side of the face. So, I did, I got up and went up, changed out of my sweater I was wearing, and cleaned up, went back down, and stood by the hoist. And that, for a long time, that memory of somebody throwing up on me, it's <laughs> hard to forget. It's hard to forget. Yeah. <laughs> So I have another question for you. How did you feel when Keith decided to go into the service? Oh, okay. I was all for it. All for Amen. it. Yeah. Yeah. And how was Mother? Well, she didn't say much. <laughs> <laughs> but I had a lot of good memories of him and his mother when he was just a little tired. I bought him a look-alike rifle, air rifle. Air rifle. Looked like a Winchester. Okay. And uh, he can get mom when she had a few slack moments. Grab her hand and say, "Come on, mom, we gotta be, gotta go kill a bear." <laughs> so they walk up on the hill, and they never found a bear. <laughs> An adventure for him. There you go. That's right. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. And I guess for her too. <laughs> <laughs> right. Good thing for her. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. So one of the questions we often think when we learn from our experiences, we all have different experiences in our life, right? And we all do different things. And I know one of your great grandsons just graduated this year from high school, right? And yeah. uh, so that's and so so that was a great experience. Were you able to go and attend that? I don't know. No, I won't. No. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, but so the, one of the questions that we have here is, would you do it all over again if you could? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And that's that's often kind of neat to ask that question to people with their life experiences, because a lot of us we end up doing a lot of different things, and when we look back, would I do it again? Because we all learn, haven't we? You know. You know, we think of the man, the man that you and I become th from our experiences. And even though we do it different tracks, you would do it all over again. Yeah, we decommissioned it to be good. <coughs> Put her in mothballs under the San Francisco Bay Bridge. What year was that? Uh, Commissioned it, took the guns off, put missiles on it, made a missile cruiser out of it. And today renamed it to USS Topeka CLG 8. Okay. And then a few years after that, they scrapped her in Philadelphia. So they scrapped it in Philadelphia. Okay. Yeah. Jim Wilson, he went up to Philly and he got some items off the Topeka. I got a gauge, a steam gauge, I think it was. And uh, he had quite a, quite a few articles. Any other stories you'd like to share? Well, I got one, but I'm not going to share it. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, we just really want to say thank you. I think the strongest statement whatsoever that we can say, what I've learned today, is the fact that you became a, a man from your experience. Went in at 17, came out, and it was all because of discipline. Right. And from what you shared with us that we can learn is that discipline <coughs> is the key. And I realize it comes in lots of shapes and sizes, but that's, so I really want to say thank you. Thank you for that. You're welcome. For allowing us to, uh, yes. to do that. Anything you wanted to add, Keith? Any other family members? If not... We just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Aww. Thank you. God bless you.